sell options, sell options. So it took me a little while to realize the consistency of selling options, but I have been selling options for a little over a month now, testing them, and I'm trying to introduce it to people because it is a slower gain, but it's much more consistent and ultimately much more profitable if you're a struggling trader. So if you are buying options all the time and you keep getting stopped out or you're up one day, down one day, down another day, up two days, down three days, all that type of stuff, you're inconsistent on the buy side. Selling options, it doesn't require as much stress. There is so much on your side and you are much more likely to profit off of trading. So there is a max profit potential. That's why people are steered away. They're always glorified by, oh, I can make 300% on this trade if this happens, if this happens, if this happens. Most of the time, those ifs don't happen. So let me show you something really quickly. I was looking at snow today um, and I've been talking about this for a while. It is in an uptrend. So Usually they don't they don't decay this fast, but you can't really beat that. Um, today I was looking at the 146 puts on snow for Friday because their earnings are on Wednesday, and I'm expecting a large move, but the premiums are just kind of crazy. So I sold some puts. Now when you sell puts, you need to have enough in your account to buy 100 shares. So for snow, I realize it is $150,000, or, or not $150,000, $15,000, sorry. That's for 1,000 shares. So 100 shares is 15000 now, it sounds like a lot of money, but for long-term investments, whether it's in your Roth IRA or whatever, that's really only two and a half years of contributions. So um, you could do it in your Roth IRA. You could sell and make some income for yourself. You could upload money that you have just sitting in a savings account and make more money on it. Or you could just ultimately just buy something cheaper. So they're all over the place. You just need to have 100 shares of something, whether that's the TQQQ here, which is a lot cheaper. You only need $2,200 to do that. Obviously, you the option prices are a lot cheaper. But Coinbase, for example, is pretty cheap. It's about $58 a share. And you can actually sell options for probably anywhere from like $250 to $300 every time. But let's talk about what it's like to sell an option. So today I saw snow jump up a little bit from here. I saw it at $150. And I was looking at the daily chart. Um, this is the weekly chart. I saw some room down, but I figured there might be a little bit of an earnings run up since there's such a large implied volatility move. And on the daily chart, we bounced off this bottom Bollinger Band. So I ended up taking some, some puts here, or I sold some puts around that 150 level for that 146 drop. So um, when you sell a put, you obviously want it to go up or chop sideways so you can collect that premium. The only way you lose is if it goes below your price. But even when you're losing, all you got to do is just exercise those shares and you know, I would end up buying shares at 146 rather than 145. But my play here is I'm not going to swing it through earnings. I'm just going to collect the decay of these puts until tomorrow. So we got a nice little bullish candle. So now I'm feeling really, really confident in my position. I bought them around 615 today. So I'm up $215 on these because now they are worth four. So when you sell contracts, you want them to go to zero. And if you've bought options before, you know that when theta decay is really important there because you don't want to buy an option if it's just going to go sideways or it's going to go against you so you have basically two bosses to beat for when you sell you only have one boss to beat and that is to make sure that it doesn't go in the opposite direction a lot faster than you want it to because it could chop around you know it could go against you but then start bouncing back up a little bit and that theta decay is on your side so you'll ultimately be profitable for example today on snow i sold them very early on and i just sold one contract and I was going to sell for $615, so I collected $615 bucks today. It's just like Monopoly. You collect Go every time you, you go around that Go spot. So $200 uh, every time you collect Go options, you just collect whatever you want to sell. So I collected $615. bucks. i am still sitting on the position because it got down to $400 today. And just by selling Snow and you look at the Theta Decay, you can basically see how much you're going to make overnight every time. So theta right here on these 146 puts right here is 90. So just for holding this overnight, I'm going to make another $90, meaning I'm going to be up over $300 on this position just for holding it for one day today. And that's all I could sell. I could hold it all day tomorrow. And if it continues upwards and then I swing it one more night, I'll probably be up like near 400, maybe $500 on this. And then I can buy it back and just collect that $500 for, I don't know, 
what was it, two-day hold? Like, who would not want to just collect $500 for having the cash in their account? You're basically rewarding yourself for having that cash. I'm not going to swing it through earnings because I don't trust it to just completely tank down. But if it does go up, I could collect that extra $100, $200, whatever is left by that Wednesday earnings earnings play. So I think it's I think it's a really great play to to start selling options, especially when it goes against you because you have two things on your side rather than one, and you're only battling one thing versus two things. So if your executions are great, you can make a good amount of money. So I'm currently up $215 on this trade, but let me show you why options are the best to sell and not buy. So when you buy an option, say you buy it at this level right here, and then it spikes up, you're up a little bit, tanks all the way down, but then it finally goes up right here, you're most likely still down in the position even though it's higher than where you bought it because of time decay. So as it took that much time to get back to this level, you are ultimately going to lose money because of that time decay that, that comes into effect here. So if we can look at this, it's a little bit hard to see because there's not a lot of volume in these put in these contracts right now, but they were 615 and then they ended up popping up to 540 at this level. So even though I bought the puts at this level right here, sorry, so I bought these puts right here for 615 and even though it spiked up all the way to right here and then dropped all the way down to low of the day, even though it went to low of the day, I was still up $50 because I bought it 35, 50, one hour earlier than this. So an hour of time decay, even though it's way lower than where I bought it and I want it to go up when you sell a put, it's just the opposite. I'm still up on the position even though it's lower because options decay. So as it gets closer to that, that price level down here, say it just started spiking all the way down, I probably would have been down on it, but a very little bit because of how much time it's taken to get here. So on any given bounce or reversal like we saw today, I'm going to be up even more money for selling that option because I am just holding it through that decaying process and I'm selling it to a willing buyer that's going to go out there and make maybe 10, 20% scalp it, sell it to the next person, and as it starts decaying and melting, they're just going to keep changing hands until it gets to basically zero by the end of its expiration, unless it completely tanks through earnings. So I'm holding for this huge premium spike because obviously during earnings, you see a massive implied volatility percentage here and large amounts of theta. So I'm taking advantage of this by selling it. And currently, 146s are worth 400 bought for 615 That's $215 collected. And then I can add this $90 on top of this because it'll be $90 worth less tomorrow. And say it goes up green tomorrow, I'll be up another extra, I don't know, let's just say $30, $40. So ultimately, I could be up $350 just holding this call option overnight because, one, it's trending in the opposite direction of where I want it to go, which is or of where I am basically not wanting it to go because I have the put. I don't want it to die. But even though it's above my price, these out-of-the-money options almost always, if you're an option buyer, are always losing value. So by selling them, I'm just collecting this money. And yes, it's slower gains. You're not going to make the 90, 100, 200, 300 percent in quick money. But realistically, how realistic is that? All the big money that you're seeing big traders make, you know, all the big money that I'm making is because I'm risking $20,000 or $30,000 on one trade and I'm getting out in a very fast manner. So in order for you to start scaling in, having more consistent gains, if you have a nine to five job, if you have other things you have to focus on, selling options, you're actually helping yourself by being busy because time decay will help you on the, in the long run here. And let's say, you know, $600 in three days, four days is not a ton of money trading, right? It's not a, like life changing money, but you do that every week, 600 here, that 600 next week, 1200, 600 the week after that. Okay. Now you're making $2,400 a month, just side income. Who would not want that? Right? If you think about it on a longer term scale, these profits really do add up. And as your cash starts growing in your account, you can start selling options with higher values here. So if you want to sell puts only, you have to have the amount of cash that it takes to buy 100 shares in your account. You don't actually have to buy them. And then on the other side, you could buy 100 shares of something and sell covered calls against it because you have the cash and collateral to sell the covered calls. So you can basically collect these premiums rather than pay for them and then have theta decay on your side. So if you are good with charts and you kind of can understand which direction, maybe it's going to bounce, maybe it's not going to bounce, you know, this is a huge opportunity for people to come in here. And also one thing I wanted to point out is this is a crazy sell signal right here. When you see this amount of volume come in here with a sell candle at the top of the Bollinger Band, wow, talk about a put. That's uh, that's easy money right there on a day trading side to the buy side. But on selling, it even though it's coming down right now, like I said, 
I'm still up on the position because it took a long time for my initial entry right here to go from here. And then it spiked up, so I started making money all day. So literally there wasn't one time that I was down on this, maybe for like the first 10 minutes of the trade, and then it instantly started just shredding, slowly putting money in my pocket, but I'd rather have somebody put money in my pocket slowly than not at all. So selling options, especially if it's going this way, theta is on your side, so as it goes to zero, you just continually collect that money. So take a look into it. Selling options is beautiful game. If you don't have enough money for $15,000, you can start small. Like I said, you could do the TQQQ. I think triple leverage QQQ is really great long-term investment. So if you wanted to do, well, not long-term, it's a long-term trade. Don't take that as financial advice because it's, you know, consult a professional before you actually invest in anything long-term or do your own research. But um, in terms of this, just as for an example, like TQQQ, here's only $22 a share. It was at 90 at one point. With it being triple leverage, it's going to take a while for it to get back here. But, you know, it does have some really nice spikes at times. So it came from 16 all the way to 27, sitting at 22. I'm expecting more of a drop here. But at the same time, in any given aspect of it, you could sell options against it if you only have about $2,200 in your account. The premiums are a lot cheaper, so you're not going to make a lot as like $600 in a day. But they do have them for like 82 next week, so 100 so you can make $100 a week, potentially, um, if you execute well. And then Coinbase is one of my most favorites, and it's only if you have like 5800 5900 in an account, and that's literally only one year of a Roth IRA. So you don't need to just upload money. You could use your retirement accounts as well to just collect income for yourself if you know how to sell them. So looking at this, it looks like you could collect around 250 200 to 300-ish on the, on the sell side of Coin as well for only having 5000 which compounds into you know, much more money. And over the course of two, three months, you'll be able to buy something like snow. Um, and the ultimate goal is obviously to have a ton of shares, the S&P 500 or the QQQ. But Tesla, honestly, the way that these premiums are priced, this is a gold mine. If you can get up to 100 shares of Tesla, 200 shares of Tesla, 300 shares, 400 shares, 500 shares, however many it may be, you could sell these premiums and in the monies are about 600 a piece. And that is with four days till expiration. If you want to go further out, 11 days out, they're 1,000 a piece. So say you have five, you can make 5,000 every week. Like there's potential for a ton of money to be made just for holding shares in something like Tesla or uh, Amazon or NVIDIA. So if you have over 100 shares on really good stocks, start to think about selling some premiums here because it's just generating income for yourself. Obviously, you need to know how to trade the charts and everything, but for this example in Snowflake today, obviously I was on the right side, so it was a lot easier and faster of a trade. It's not always that fast, but when time is on your side, you basically are just holding a contract that you're just waiting to melt and melt and melt to zero, and you just collect that as premium income. So beautiful, beautiful strategy. I've been utilizing it a lot lately. Haven't lost a trade in a very long time. On the sell side, I have been stopped out of buying uh, calls, but that's just because of theta and it'll reverse on me. But even when it does reverse on you in a sell signal and it starts to get to the low of the day, even though it's a lot lower than where I bought it for and I want this to trend upwards or sideways, it's all the way down here, a dollar less, maybe a dollar fifty less than where I bought it or sold it for, and I'm still profitable. So think about that, play around with them. Maybe it'll change up your perspective on the op on the market and just utilize why they're made. Keep in mind the options are made to go to zero for a reason. So people that are writing them can make a ton of money. Maybe start to play with the house. Psychology game, guys. Psychology game. Let me know if any of that makes sense. If not, hit the comments and I'll be sure to respond.